of G.I. Joe in Marvel Comics. Go, go! Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, your friendly neighborhood 1980s G.I. Joe reviewer, and today I'll be taking a look at the old Marvel comic run of G.I. Joe Special Missions, the bi-monthly spin-off of the main G.I. Joe title. I'll be taking a look at issues number 8 to 14, originally published between December of 1987 and October of 1988, uh, as they were reprinted in IDW's uh, trade paperback, Volume 2. Now, just like Volume 1, Volume 2 also has a very handy index, as well as a new introduction by Mark Balamo, who is better known as the writer of The Ultimate Guide to G.I. Joe Toys, 1982 through 1994, an identification guide which I highly recommend. Now, the stories within here are mostly, uh, mostly just singular stories. They're not one uh, long uh, story arc, but... Uh, I'll be actually halting my main G.I. Joe title run uh, around issue 80 because these, chrono these all these uh, stories between issues 1 through 28, they sort of chronologically fit in around that era of, of uh, late 1987 through 1989. Uh, one interesting thing about G.I. Joe Special Missions is the tone of the stories is actually rather dark and mature. Um, a little bit beyond that of the main title. And as such, IDW has actually put uh, a parental advisory warning uh, on just the special missions trade paperbacks. So younger readers should probably take note of that before picking one of these up. Issue 8 is titled Ambush. In this story, the G.I. Joes are on a mission for the CIA to capture or kill a defector who stole imported microchips. Despite a perfect ambush, the G.I. Joe team's plans go awry, and Lowlight is left with the decision to kill a man in cold blood. Can he do it? This is the first appearance of the deceitful CIA case officer Anderson. It's also a very interesting contrast to how much detail goes into explaining how stealthy the drop plane is versus how the G.I. Joes are later picked up by the noisy and highly visible Tomahawk helicopter. There also seems to be a piece of missing dialogue between Beachhead asking where Lowlight is and Flint's comment. Issue 9 is titled Plausible Denial. In this story, a small G.I. Joe team free a small Russian special force team who were captured in Afghanistan and trick them into dressing up as G.I. Joes themselves to carry out a mission in Iran. Even with plausible deniability firmly in their favor, will the Russians carry out the G.I. Joe's mission or betray them? I'll admit to reading this story a few times to try and figure out why the G.I. Joe team even needed the Russians to carry out a rescue mission in their name. At least these Russian soldiers aren't portrayed as over-the-top stereotypes like the October Guard. They came off as pleasant and interesting characters in their own right. This is the second appearance of the unnamed CIA Afghanistan liaison, first seen way back in the main title G.I. Joe number 6. Issue 10 is titled Turnabout. In this story, the G.I. Joes must escort an African prince living in England back to his hometown to stabilize the country during a political rift. The Joes are assaulted by both sides of the conflict since the prince's loyalties and integrity are unknown. This is the first and only appearance of fictional African country of Kalinga. Considering how this story ended, it would have been nice to see what political seeds were sown afterwards. There's also a strange art error here, where a pair of Uzis become a pair of pistols between panels. Issue 11 is titled Sheep's Clothing. In what appears to be a simple robbery and hostage taking at an army post exchange is anything but as the criminals are highly organized and deadly. It's up to three Lady Joes to wade into the trap as unarmed hostage replacements. There is an error here where there's a panel where Scarlet's blind blindfold is missing. And this is probably the best Jinx comic in the entire old Marvel run. She's a total badass here. Issue 12 is titled Air Show. In this story, during a New York air show 
featuring three G.I. Joe jets and their pilots, Firefly plots to steal the new Balforce 2000 Vector. Will Maverick be able to get his jet back when all he has at his disposal is an old biplane? This is a very light-hearted issue in between the dark and serious ones before and after it. Many New York landmarks and attractions are pointed out, some no longer in existence. Interestingly, one featured attraction, the USS Intrepid Aircraft Carrier Museum, was later the site of the 1994 Hasbro International G.I. Joe Collectors Convention. Issue 13 is titled Washout. In what was supposed to be a milk run assignment for the evaluation of probationary new G.I. Joes Lightfoot and Mangler goes horribly wrong. Captured by enemy forces and tortured into revealing their mission, will the Joes continue or give up? This is the first and last appearance of probationary G.I. Joe Mangler. His name would be mentioned again in the main title G.I. Joe issue number 145 as one of the Joes among the dead. This is also the first appearance of Lightfoot, who would be injured here before his evaluation was complete and sent back to the G.I. Joe recruit site in the main title G.I. Joe number 82. Political officer a man needed to interrogate his prisoners to find out they were G.I. Joes, but Dusty is wearing the G.I. Joe logo openly on a shirt. It's also on the side of the APC. It's either an art error or a clue to how stupid officer a man is. I'm actually bettering the latter. This is possibly the darkest issue in a series known for its dark and serious tone, but it's also one of the best reads. It certainly lives up to its issue's number, number 13. Issue 14 is titled, In From The Cold. In this story, a small team of G.I. Joes, led by dodgy CIA agent Anderson, fly to a disputed protectorate of China to track down a rogue agent. They discover he is still carrying out his 20-year-old orders to train and lead rebels against communist China expansion, when the modern Chinese army tracks them all down and a fight ensues. Unlike most of the standalone stories in the Special Missions series, uh, this continues in issues 15, 18, and 19. This is the first appearance of rogue CIA agent Colin Estrahazy and his opposite number, Chinese intelligence, Colonel Peng. This storyline seems to be an allegory to the conflict in Tibet and China. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind-the-scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video, and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.